Hi, this is Lainey Reno, and you are listening to the Visionary Family Ministries podcast. You are about to listen to part two of Healing Family Relationships with my dad, Dr. Rob Reno. We hope this message is an encouragement to you and that you share it with your friends. You can learn more about our ministry at visionaryfam.com. Let me talk to you about another principle for healing family relationships, and this is healing through boundaries healing through boundaries. This is a a, a very deep and complicated subject, and I'm only doing 10 minutes on it today. But Romans 12, 18 says this. God says, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. What does if possible mean? It's not a trick question. What does if possible mean? If it's possible, translation, it might not be possible to be at peace with a family member because of decisions that they're making, because of attitudes that they have. But you notice the emphasis here, if possible, so far as it depends on you. In other words, if the relationship's broken, if the relationship's not healing, don't let that be your fault. This means that God wants us to be ready and willing to seek reconciliation. Now listen, being a a person of peace, being eager for reconciliation, being eager for healing, it does not mean being a doormat. It does not mean looking the other way when there is, is sin. Sometimes it means, and this is what we're talking about now, sometimes it means setting boundaries around a situation with a toxic person. People get so confused about what forgiveness is and what forgiveness isn't. You can forgive someone without trusting them. Forgiving someone does not mean trusting someone. So let's say that you're going through a difficult financial time and you share uh, that with your mom and your mom posts a prayer request on her Facebook page about your financial problems. And a week later, she comes back to you and says, I wanted to share an update with my prayer group. What's going on? Okay, now it would be very appropriate for you to say to your mom, listen, mom, uh, you shouldn't have shared my personal stuff on Facebook under the guise of a prayer request. I forgive you. I'm not going to harbor anger and bitterness toward you, but I'm also not going to talk to you about my finances anymore. I'm not going to trust you with that information. See, I've forgiven her. I don't harbor anger, bitterness, or resentment, but I'm not going to trust her with that again. It doesn't mean allowing yourself to continue to be abused and mistreated by a person. Forgiveness also does not mean liking someone. You can forgive them and not like them. Okay, listen, like, what is like? Like is a warm fuzzy that you have for nice people. You will like nice people. You have warm feelings, people treat you nice, you will like them. Did you know there's no commandment in the Bible that you have to like anybody? Thou shalt have warm feelings for all people. Not there because you're going to like people that are nice, and you're not going to have warm fuzzies for people who aren't nice. Now, don't get too excited about that. You have to love the people you don't like, right? So God doesn't let us off the hook quite, quite that easy. Let me give you a boundary example from Scripture. You remember Joseph with his brothers, right? They, they're jealous of him, strip him naked, throw him in the well, sell him into slavery, tell dad that an animal ate him, Okay? He goes off to Egypt, spends years in prison, but God raises him up right, to second in command in Egypt. God uses him to save uh, the people from famine. The brothers come down to Egypt. They're looking for food. They come into Joseph's presence. Joseph recognizes them immediately and says, guys, it's Joseph. It's me. I'm your brother. I love you. I'm so glad you're here. Let's forget everything that happened. We're back together at last. Hello? Not quite, right? I I skipped some stuff, didn't I? See, Joseph, listen, the Bible does not explicitly tell us this, but I do think it's a fair inference. I believe that all after all those years in prison that God blessed Joseph with forgiveness for his brothers. You, You don't have the sense that Joseph is hanging on to bitterness and anger about what has been done to him. He sees God's hand and what happened, right? But when the brothers come, 
I, so I believe Joseph is free of his anger and bitterness and resentment. He is not going to trust them again. He's not going to open his heart to them again. He's not going to enter into relationship with them again until he has evidence that their hearts have changed and that their behaviors changed. He wants to see repentance from them. He wants to see that they've acknowledged that what they did was wrong. So the, the two events, first he overhears them talking. And he says, this, the brothers are saying, this is happening to us because of the guilt of our brother, because of what we did to Joseph. And that's the first time Joseph goes away and cries, remember? And then the second time is he tests them. Is their behavior going to change? Are they going to sell out Benjamin to save their own hides? And when they offer their own lives for Benjamin, they know that they've truly repented. And it's at that point, then he drops his boundary. He is now willing to enter into relationship with them again. He's willing to draw them close to him again because they have evidenced changed behaviors. Let me tell you a, a modern day story. This was a couple uh, that was connected to our ministry, Steve and Karen, names changed. Steve and Karen were um, having difficulties with Karen's parents, the, the grandparents of their children. Two things, Karen's dad was fond of using colorful language, colorful sailor nautical language, and uh, used that kind of language a lot around the grandkids. And they had, had tried to steer him away from that, but he just continued. And Karen's mom, grandma, was, uh, was really harsh with the kids. Anytime they misbehaved, not only that, but she would um, kind of disregard Karen's rules. So she would know Karen has a certain rule for her kids, but she would say, nope, I'm doing it my way. I'm the grandma. So Steve and Karen just sort of went with the flow for a little while, thinking that if they chose the path of peace and just didn't say anything, that things would get better. Well, things continued as they went along. Uh, and, and they realized that they had to, to take a risk and establish uh, a boundary. So they asked the grandparents if they could have a, a conversation, a personal conversation. And, and I, I wrote this down. This is, this is how it went. They said, thanks for being willing to talk to us. Uh, we want to tell you we love you and appreciate you. Because we care about our relationship with you and your relationship with our kids, we need to have an important conversation. Dad, I know that you use some swear words, but those are not appropriate words to use in our house or around our children. Mom, sometimes when you're dealing with the kids, especially when they misbehave, you're harsh with them. And also there have been times when you know we have a rule for something that you ignore our rules and do what you want. This is a pattern that needs to change. Now hear this, this is the key. We want to have a great relationship with you and we want you to have a great relationship with the kids. But if these things don't change, we won't be able to spend as much time together. You see that? We love you. We want to have positive relationships with you. But this unhealthy pattern, this toxic pattern, this our hurtful pattern, we have to have a boundary up to keep that out of our lives. Now, the, the initial conversation did not end very well. It was a little awkward and it was a little tense. But a few weeks later, the grandparents came back and, and, and circled back. Now, listen, because the grandparents wanted to maintain a relationship with the grandkids, they did not want to be cut out of grandkid access. They said, okay, we'll try and we'll work on it. And things weren't perfect, but things were a lot better. Now, I want to give you a, a, some warning here. Boundary setters oftentimes become the bad guys in the family. So you see a lot of families are sweeping under the rug families when there's problems. So let's imagine, I don't know that we have a, I know it's carpet up here, but whatever. Let's say we've got a, a rug up here on the stage. Every day folks come in to clean and they just sweep the dust off the stage under the rug. Well, one day of that, no big deal. Two days a week, maybe even a year, no big deal. But a hundred years at Bethany of sweeping it under the rug, our rug is now two feet off the ground, right, with, with dust all over the years. And if anybody touches that rug, over it goes, and everybody comes in and sweeps it under the rug. Okay? Um, the, a lot of family, sweep it under the rug family systems, anyone who says, hey, I think we have a problem under the rug here, okay, you're accused of making the room dirty. All right? Or the other example, let's say your house is burning down. And you say, the house is burning down. The rest of the family says, shut your mouth. Don't talk bad about our house. <laughs> I'm not trying to talk bad about the house. I'm just saying it's burning down. I think we need help. So I, I, just be prepared. 
okay? Be prepared that if you're in a family system that doesn't deal directly with hurt and you're going to choose to try to deal directly with it and set up some boundaries, you may be accused, listen, you may be accused of being unloving and causing problems. But in reality, you've shifted into a mode where you are now loving enough to help the family move toward healing. One more principle. Oh, my picture of Joseph, I failed to give that to you. It's a multimedia extravaganza. Okay, third principle, healing through compassion. Healing through compassion. One of my favorite scriptures about Jesus's ministry is from Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. Jesus looks out at a crowd of lost people, and the scripture says, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And I wonder, as you think about your son or daughter that's hurt you or a spouse or a parent or a family member, I wonder if, if you ever have Christ's compassion for them. One of the things that we want to ask God to do is, God, would you give me Jesus' heart for sinful people? Would you give me Jesus' heart for messed up people? And this is not excusing their behavior. This is not sweeping things under the rug. This is kind of that principle, this modern proverb you've heard before, hurt people hurt people. People who are behaving in toxic, unhealthy ways, they're certainly responsible for what they're doing, but a portion of what they're doing comes from their own hurt and their own woundedness. This podcast has been brought to you free of charge because of the generous support of listeners like you from around the world. If you believe more families need to hear this message, please consider making a donation. All donations are tax deductible and can be made easily and securely at visionaryfam.com slash donate. For additional resources that go along with this message or for information about hosting a family conference in your community, visit us online at visionaryfam.com. Hi, my name is Rob Reno with Visionary Family Ministries. Every family is struggling. Every family is messed up. You put a bunch of sinful people under the same roof together, you get a lot of sin, you get a lot of problems. My wife Amy and I have been married 25 years. We've got seven children. Not a day goes by where we don't have hurt feelings, conflict, problems of one kind or another. The Christian family has got to become an expert in giving and receiving forgiveness. You know, my greatest struggle with forgiveness had to do with my father. My parents got divorced when I was 15 years old, and the straw that broke the camel's back was my father's infidelity. And I had so much hatred and bitterness and anger toward him. And I had some Christian friends at the time tell me, well, Rob, you just need to forgive him. I guess that's good Christian advice, but at the time, honestly, it seemed pretty superficial, pretty pat answery, pretty Sunday schooly and, and unrealistic. I had other people tell me, well, Rob, time heals all wounds. You just need to give this time. And I sure found out that isn't true. Imagine you get a big chop on your arm and somebody says, well, give that time. Well, no, you're going to bleed out or you're going to get infected and things are going to go badly. Now, what I did learn is that God can heal all wounds over time. God loves your family. It's not too late for God to use you as a person of peace. And God brought pastors into my life and he brought key scriptures into my life to teach me how forgiveness really worked. I want to put this new book, Healing Family Relationships, into your hands. It's going to give you a game plan for seeking peace and reconciliation in your struggling family relationships. Nothing superficial, nothing pat answery, no magic formulas, but some incredible scriptures with how to pray, how to talk to your family member, how to set boundaries, how to be patient, how to look for what God is doing. The book is packed with stories of healing and reconciliation, some of which are still in process. I'm going to tell you the story, the miracle story 
of how God healed and reconciled my relationship with my father. It's going to make God look so good and it's going to give you hope for whatever family relationship you're struggling with right now. You can get Healing Family Relationships wherever you buy books. It's also an Audible book. It's available on audible.com. And you can find out more about the book and our ministry at our website, Visionary Fam. That's short for family, visionaryfam.com. You can learn about hosting a Healing Family Relationships weekend at your church, how to use Healing Family Relationships in your next small group Bible study. But again, God loves your family. And God can give you a game plan through his word for how you, how he can use you to seek peace and reconciliation in your home. God bless you.